Okay, so what I'd like to look at is a simplified version of what you're going to be doing on your practice test. Here I'm going to have a ball here that rolls along a um, frictionless ramp or towards a fr frictionless ramp. So I've got a nice um, thing here and then I've got my ramp here coming up like that. I've got a ball that's rolling towards it. At some point I'll get used to this pen and draw prettier things. I guess the ball will have a mass and a speed if it's actually rolling in that direction. Um, then it's going to collide with a box. All right, so there's a box here um, with a mass capital M, I'll call it. And when this guy hits this guy, bang, 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 um, this guy's going to go up and this guy's going to stop. So this, the ball will stop over here, this spot, and then this guy will go up this way. We want to figure out how high up this guy's going to go. All right. Now on your practice tests, you're given an angle here. Well, you're given a grade, which is the tangent of the angle. And you're given um, a coefficient of friction. So it's going to be a little bit longer. And so there's a couple other things you have to do. Just remember about that when you get to the practice test. Then um, we have to sort of categorize all the things we know about this stuff. Like I said, we have a ball here. So let's talk about the ball. And that ball has a mass, called that mass little m. And we have a speed for the box, ball, excuse me. Balls have speeds when they roll. And that's a little v. And let's see, it's going towards a ramp, but that's frictionless and we don't know the angle, so we don't actually have any information about it that's important. Um, and then we have a box that also has a mass, that's capital M, and we want to find something here. Now we want to find something at all, or something. How high does the box rise? We want to find the final height. of the box H, capital H there. Okay, so now we've sort of condensed all of this information, all this prose into things we can use for solving the problem and we're ready to go on to the next step, which is to sort of conceptualize that problem a little more before we actually start doing things, right? So here we've got our ball and our box um, for representation, we don't really need a representation today, but you'll need one for your um, practice test problem. So we'll just give you the same representation. Um, there'll be a little bit of a difference in there, but you know, we just want to give you a sort of look at what's supposed to happen there. So we draw a free body diagram. Free body diagrams have axes and a box. Uh, we should label those axes, so that's my tangential direction, that's my normal direction. Uh, what sort of forces are uh, ap applicable? Uh, well, we've got a weight, right, coming down, and a normal force. Obviously, we'll have some other things going on in your practice problem. Um, normal force happens to be in the normal direction, that's nice. And let's see, what other fun things do we need to know? We need to know the net force. Which direction is the net force? The net force is this way. It's going to be slowing down this thing. So your net force F is down there. Uh, we're not going to have to worry about F and N or even W today because we're going to use potential energy. Um, so what concept do we have? Well, the big one here is either potential energy or the collision. So we'll say um, conservation of momentum is the most important one. Conservation of momentum. It's one of our favorites, right? Makes life easy when you have when you can conserve momentum. Uh, and that's saying what? That's saying the sum of all of the masses times the velocities at the beginning. So those are 
small m small v is equal to the sum of all the masses times their velocities. I'll do final as capital V there. Okay, so that's going to be when the ball hits here and transfers the momentum there. That's going to throw the box up into the air or up the ramp. So we've got that and we're ready to go. All right, so now we know everything. We just have to start planning stuff. All right, so when we start our plan, we want something with this, our final answer in it. So what is our plan? Well, what does, what does that say? Well, we know we want the box to be up here at some height h. It's rising without friction, so, it, so the energy is conserved. So probably a good thing is to use conservation of energy, right? So let's start with conservation of energy. One, conserve energy. All right, and when we conserve energy, that means we have um, the kinetic energy, one half capital M capital V squared, because we've got the box that's going up and its initial speed, and that's equal to the um, final kinetic ener energy plus the final potential energy. Uh, if it's as high as it can go, it stops at that spot, so it only has potential energy, which is capital M G H. Okay, and let's see, H is what we wanted. G is a universal constant, that's okay. M we know, because it's right there, right? And big V we don't know, that's a big question mark. We're going to have to fix that. And big M again, we know. So how are we going to figure that out? Well, the only thing we don't know is the V, the capital V. So we want to go to um, conservation of momentum. Why do we want to conserve momentum? Uh, well, first of all, we know that this is going to connect the big V, right? The big V to our little V here, which we already know. So we'll be pretty good with that. So we have that initial velocity um, times the mass of the small ball, or of the ball, and times the mass of the box times uh, the final velocity of that box. Okay, And let's see, we know the initial velocity v, we know the, or initial speed v, we know the mass of the ball, we know the mass of the block, and we wanted V. Okay, when we look at that, that means we've gotten rid of that. Um, we now know everything. We've gotten rid of all question marks. Uh, we've, if we had a variable list, we'd have crossed off everything in our variable list. So we now have um, all of the equations that we need to actually solve the problem, to do the math, right? The plan here, remember, is the physics. And we're making our plan to do the math over here. All right, so now we need to execute on that math. Um, this isn't too terribly difficult. Uh, how would we want to do this? Well, we just um, start off, we'll transfer everything over. I'll reverse this equation one here. So I've got MGH is equal to one half capital M, capital V squared. Let's see, I can cancel out a couple of big M's. I can divide by G, right? And if I do that, I have H is equal to V squared over 2G, which is something you may, seen, you may have seen that before, and you'll probably see it again. So that's algebra. Let's see, now I want to do a substitution, right? Uh, this big V, I don't know, um, so I can use this to do it, right? So V is, well, I don't want to do that here. You'll do it over there. Uh, v is equal to, um, big V is slower than little v because if, I guess if capital M is greater than M, I didn't specify. So, but anyways, we have to um, 
go ahead and substitute this wherever we see this. So our substitution leads us to 1 over 2g times m over m, lowercase m over uppercase m squared times small v squared. So there's substitution and maybe a little algebra. And I would say that's pretty close to done. Maybe I would, I'd prefer to do something like this just to make it look a little bit nicer. A uh, small uh, mass of the um, ball divided by the mass of the block squared times v squared over 2g. And so that could be my answer right there. That's my solution. All right, now all I have to do is check my solution. All right, um, we've got three things. One, of course, is is it reasonable? And if you look at these, this is reasonable, right? So if the uh, block is heavier than the uh, ball, then we've got this number that's less than one here, and that's going to reduce the height. If, if it's vice versa, if the ball is heavier than the block, then that's going to increase the height. So it's reasonable for that. The faster your, your ball is initially going, the more likely, it, the higher actually it's going to throw that up. Again, these are completely reasonable things. We're supposed to think about that. And then we have two, two other ways to check that are a little more automatic or a little more mathematically inclined. Uh, one is just to make sure that these things are all these things or universal constants. So let's start with m. Is m here? Yes. So the small mass is one of my givens. So that's out of the way. Uh, big M, is big M one of my givens? Yes. So I can put a big M here, a capital M. Uh, v is the speed, initial speed, the speed of the ball one of my givens? Yes, it is. So I'm doing pretty good. And then G. Is g one of my givens? No, but what it is is it's a universal constant. Universal constants, materials constants go down here, so we're okay with it. All right, so since every symbol that's in here is either a number like 2 or a given um, variable or a universal constant, we are happy, and all we have to do is check our dimensions, right? Dimensions are very important. We always want to check them. All right, so how am I going to check my dimensions? Well, uh, first of all, of course, I need to know which dimensions I want. I need dimensions of height. Dimensions of height are length, right? It'll be in meters or feet or something like that. So L is what I want when I do the math on this part here. So here I have little m over big M um, squared here. So I got that part. Um, times v squared. Okay, so I got that part. And then I have g to the minus 1. So I got that part. And the two uh, numbers don't have units, so we don't have to worry about it. All right, so now I've got a mass over a mass. That's 1, that's squared, so we're okay. We've got units of 1 for that. Uh, the velocity, we have l t to the minus 1 squared, and the gravitational acceleration g, lt to the minus 2, we have that to the minus 1, so basically we have l, l squared over t squared times um, t squared over l, cancel, that, that, bam, l, all right. So we're good with that as well, and that gives us our solution. So we've done everything. It looks fine. I think we're about done. So this is more or less what you need to do when you work on your uh, practice problems or your practice quiz. Uh, the issue here is going to be this isn't going to work anymore because this will have friction on it. So because this has friction on it, you'll be given a grade here. A grade for your angle that remember that's the tangent of theta and then the friction is going to force you to do um, something with work so you're going to have to worry about the total work done to the box rather than just look at uh, conservation of energy but you'll be fine